Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very simple iron farm with Villager Training Hall attached to it, and this can even be upgraded with Zombie Villager Curing as well. Overall, there is a lot of pros to combining your Training Hall and your Iron Farm. This setup also allows you to get the best Villager prices as well, so there is a lot of good reasons to build this, and the great news is, is that it doesn't really take that much effort either. The rates of this iron farm are that of a standard design, so it gives you anywhere from 420 to 440 or so, depending on your luck and depending on how much each golem drops. But as you can see, if you AFK for a little while, you're going to get stacks upon stacks of iron. Unlike other iron farm training hall designs, all of your villagers are on the ground level, meaning that you don't need to move them up at all, which is always super inconvenient and survival. And this also means that you don't need to worry about your iron golems spawning on your villager trading cells because they just cannot spawn that low. You'll also never have iron golems spawning on the ground using this design either. You may have noticed that this iron farm only has a single level, and that is due to a very small change to iron farms a few months ago. The change basically made it so that all iron farms only need a single level to get maximum rates, so you don't actually need to have two layers in your iron farms anymore. It's not necessary, so save yourself some time and resources. Because all of our villagers are on the ground, they're technically too far away to detect the beds up there at the top of level. However, that's an easy fix. We just put one villager up here. You can still trade with this guy if you want to, but he's just kind of up here just to see the beds for the rest of the villagers. All the villagers that are populating your iron farm are around the edges of the farm and these guys have their own workstations so they can have their own professions and trades and all that good stuff. Now I cured one villager in the area and that gave the area of effect a discount to all of our villagers meaning that every single villager's trades are super duper cheap. For example this trade went from 16 emeralds down to one meaning that I can buy protection for for a single emerald and I didn't have to do anything to this guy at at all. So as you can see, there are some great reasons to combine your iron farms and your trading hall. So what if you want to make your villager trades even cheaper? Well, that's incredibly easy. You can turn any of your villagers and your trading hall into a zombie villager and then curing them. Curing any villager in your trading hall gives an area of effect to all of your villagers, reducing all of their prices, which is super convenient. I made an entire other video on this little topic. So if we want to make this librarian a lot cheaper, all we need to do is like make sure that he's traded with at least once and then we can simply go ahead and unpower this rail press the button that will move our zombie into place this guy will now get turned into a zombie villager and then all we need to do is get ourselves a weakness potion or an arrow of weakness and then a piercing crossbow this makes it so that you can infinitely cure a zombie villager without expending anything shoot him with that arrow hit him with a golden apple and then you can pick up the arrow again. That guy's going to take a couple of minutes to cure, but when he does cure, he's going to have significantly reduced prices. We also need to move the zombie out of the way, which is surprisingly easy. Turn on the rail, nudge the minecart, and then he goes back to your little holding cell. You'll take a little damage. It's not a big deal. In general, a great way of curing zombie villagers is using the arrows of weakness. It is so much cheaper than potions, and if you use a crossbow, it's even cheaper as well. The Fletcher villagers will actually sell you arrows of weakness as their final trade if you get lucky, so you'll never even run out of these or even have to craft them in the first place. And there we go. Our zombie villager is now cured. It only took a couple of minutes, and his trade was originally 14 emeralds, but has gone down to one so now we can buy anything from him for one emerald the great thing about curing this villager directly is that his prices will be like this forever they will never go back up permanently now if you buy him completely out of stock they will temporarily go back up to their original price but if you give them a little bit of time maybe go sleep in a bed or whatever then the trades will revert to one emerald again a little note here if your villager has a super high priced item like a 64 emerald book then you might need to cure him like three to four times in order to get that price down to one emerald warning if you want to use zombie villager curing in your farm you need to be playing on hard mode otherwise 
otherwise your zombie will just kill the villager instead of converting it into a zombie villager and that's pretty much all there is to know about this iron farm villager trading hall with zombie curing discounts stay tuned to learn how to build it and if you've enjoyed the video so far and want to see more of them then maybe consider subscribing you'll also be helping us reach 500,000 subscribers on the channel but otherwise let's hop into the tutorial all the materials that you need to build this iron farm are down in the description of the video for your convenience and you're going to need a 21 by 21 area to build this farm it's also going to be eight blocks above the ground and two blocks below the ground you don't need to chunk align this build but you can if you want to Ideally, this iron farm should be about 100 blocks away from other villagers, beds, bells, workstations, and just other villager tech, but if you know what you're doing, you can put it a lot closer. Either way, we're going to start off the build with a center 3x3 area, go ahead and build it up with a little 3x3 platform of solid blocks like this. In the lower right hand corner, we're going to mine away this block and then go down into the ground by two blocks in these three locations. Put in yourself a double chest, crouch, and place in a hopper behind that. Put in a campfire above that and then two pieces of glass right here. You want two buttons directly above the campfire just to stop that smoke. And then we're going to go ahead and put some more glass on the front of it as well. We're going to go ahead and continue around the entirety of this little 3x3 platform that we built just to contain the water. Place in a water source on that back left corner and that should push everything to the right. That's going to push all of your items into your collection and it's also going to push all of your cats onto the campfire as well. Build up with another layer of glass and then we want a layer of solid blocks above this and this is actually going to be the layer of our spawning platform right here. Go ahead and put two signs on the back wall, crouch and place another sign on that one. And then we want a sign in the middle of each of these little rows of blocks like so. We're going to put the lava source right in between all of this later on in the build. Now that we have the foundation of our iron farm, we want to go ahead and branch out from all of these lines of blocks by seven blocks. So one, two, three, four five six seven and then on this side one two three four five six seven and then do that on the other two sides and then fill in the entire platform this platform needs to be built out of solid blocks you cannot use slabs so use any form of like cobblestone or stone bricks or anything like that once your platform is completely built, it should be 19 by 19. So double check everything and make sure it is the same size as the one that I have here. The next step is super simple. We need to go to the corner, place in a solid block, place in two leaves to the sides of it like so, and then just take a line of leaves all the way to the next corner and do the same thing. Saw a block there, two leaves up on either side, and then just keep on going around the farm until you've done this on all four sides. These leaves will stop iron golems from spawning on the edges of the farm. Now go ahead and grab yourself a water bucket and go to one of the corners. Place a water source on that corner, another source right here, and make sure that you never place sources directly next to the corners. If you place a water source right there, the entire farm is going to flood and you'll need to rebuild the entire thing. So place one on the corners, skip a block, and then every other block you need to place a water source. So this will form some infinite water sources along the edge and keep on doing this until you get to the corners. Skip the block right next to the corner, go up and then continue this all the way across. Make sure you of course do not place the water bucket onto the leaves because that will waterlog the leaves and then flood the lower areas of the farm. You'll need to break the leaf, put in a solid block, and then replace the leaf. As you can see, all the water should flow to the middle perfectly and you shouldn't have any issues with the water overflowing on the edges. And now we need to finish up the structure of the iron farm. So line yourself up with the very center of the iron farm and we need to place in a solid block right here with some leaves to the three sides and then a little roof on it as well. This is where our villager that is going to be detecting the beds is going to be going and we'll install him later. We also want to go down to the bottom layer of the iron farm directly underneath the very edges of it and line yourself up with the center yet again. Place in a block right there and then every other block until you reach the corner of the iron farm and then you simply place one on the diagonal and continue placing them every other block. Our villagers are going to be placed right here in between these solid blocks so we're building up the foundations of the villager trading hall right now. 
Again, you can do this going all the way around the iron farm. Build up as many of these cells as you like. We need at least 10, but you can have up to 20 before you need to start adding more beds to your iron farm. Once we have a few of these blocks in place, all we need to do is place another one on top of it, two behind it, one on top, and then just do that going all the way around this entire build. You should end up with this nice little zigzag of blocks like so. Now we're going to start by placing in some saw blocks directly above all of these cells. You can place these directly on the underside of your spawning platform. And then once you have all of those in place, get in yourself a temporary block and an upper trap door. Remove your temporary block if you want to. And these trap doors are going to trap your villagers in the cells. Due to the openness of this villager training hall, I would recommend putting a little wall around your iron farm and definitely light up the area with some torches as well. You don't really want your villagers getting eaten by zombies, except when you do want them to. I would recommend actually tearing out these two center cells that are directly lined up with your kill chamber. That way you have easy access to the inside of the farm and you can access your loot chest. And now it is time to get some villagers for your training hall. You need at least 10 to start off the build, but I would recommend getting a 20. You can build a temporary villager breeder next to the iron farm. That way you don't need to transport villagers that far. If you need a temporary design, then check out the one in the iCards and link down below. It is super simple. You can use pretty much any villagers that you want to for your farm, except for the nitwits. These guys do not link to a workstation, so they're not going to help you get iron golems. Don't use these ones at all. And of course, you can't use any babies either. Not only are they annoying, they just actually will not work in the farm. To get villagers into your trading cells, it is a pretty easy. Basically, you can clip them into a minecart through the corner of blocks like so, and then you just get them on a rail. You send them into your little thing, and then you simply break the minecart, and then they are stuck in there. You can then easily remove the rails and start on the next one. So go ahead and repeat this process for all of your villager cells. Of course, getting a villager up to the top is super easy. All you need is a little staircase and a little bit of powered rail. You nudge them up there, and then he is good to go then you can simply go ahead and break that minecart break the rails and remove everything else of course it's also a good idea to put down a lightning rod somewhere in the area just to avoid your villagers turning into witches and now it is time to install the beds. So we need to go to the center of the farm and pillar up by three blocks. And now we need to completely surround the three by three center of the farm like so. This should be a five by five square. And now we need to put another layer of blocks going all the way around this one as well. Once we have this platform in place, go ahead and place down a bed on the far corner. And we should see some green particles from one of our villagers linking to it. And there we go. That means that everything is working pretty properly if it doesn't link to a villager then either this guy is at the wrong layer it just isn't here in general or you have another village too close by now what we're going to do is just simply place in the rest of the beds and we should get green particles at all of these so we need seven on either side and then we need three in between like so for a total of 20. you need a minimum of 20 beds in your iron farm in order to get iron golems and now that we place in all of those we can simply go ahead and remove the temporary platform of blocks underneath it and now it's finally time click on one of these signs with a lava bucket and that will place your lava right in the center of the farm Farm, and that will kill all of your iron golems. In order for your farm to start spawning golems, 75% of your villagers need a workstation and to have worked at it in the last day. So start by placing down one workstation and find out who that links to. They'll have the green particles and then simply place the workstation in front of them. Every single villager in your area should have a workstation in front of them, including that guy up there. And once you have that done, you should see iron golems spawning shortly. And there we go, I just placed in the final workstation and we already have our first iron golem. And now that all of our villagers have workstations, we're going to be getting golems non-stop. And because we have 20 villagers, we can actually get two golems at a time. So the iron farm is now fully functional and your training hall is actually fully functional now as well. This thing really is cranking. I've only been here for like a minute and a half and we already have about 20 iron in the chest plus two more sad golems. 
If you want to have more than 20 villagers in your trading hall, you'll need one bed per villager. If you have more villagers than beds, then your farm is going to stop working. So you can basically just add in more beds super easily and like that. In general, you want the beds to be as close to the center as possible, and you want the pillows to be as close to the center as possible. If you want to install the zombification system, that is super easy. We need to go behind the villager cells and simply mine out a two block wide area behind them. We also need to remove this block in order to give access to the villager for the zombie to actually eat them. So go ahead and mine out this two wide area going behind all of your villager cells. Once you have all that mined out, we need a power rail behind every villager with a lever on it, and then in between the cells simply have a normal rail. So go ahead and build that up going all the way around the entire system. Notably, you should have a regular rail in the corners like so, and then one lever right here to control both of these rails. In general, all of these levers should be flicked on so that your rails are powered. And then at the very ends of it, you want to go off by two blocks, have another powered rail into a solid block, and then a button right there. And also put two pieces of glass right there as well. This is where your zombie is going to be hiding out and where it's going to be stored. And of course, do this on the opposite side. Getting a zombie itself isn't actually that difficult, just wait until nighttime and they will come to you. They're mostly going to be distracted by all the villagers, so they probably won't even attack you that much. Place some rails at their feet and place down a minecart and they'll pretty much just get right into it. And of course, make sure that you also name your zombie as well, that way it doesn't despawn. And then all you need to do is kind of just get it on the rail line and push it into this area. So whenever you want to cure a villager, all you need to do is turn off the powered rail that is behind them, press the button on your zombie, the zombie will scroll along, it might hit a couple villagers on the way, but that's fine. Once it goes ahead and kills that villager, then you simply turn on the rail again, push them back, and that's all there is to it. We then need to go ahead and shoot this guy with our one weakness arrow and the piercing crossbow heal them with a golden apple and then just give them a couple of minutes i would recommend doing one cure at a time that way the workstations don't get jumbled because if you do like four cures at a time then when they you know become a villager again they might link to the workstation a cell over. So again, curing one villager will give the area of effect discount to all villagers in your trading hall for a limited amount of time. And then the villager that you're actually curing will get the most potent discount that will last forever. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns regarding today's Bedrock Edition Iron Farm, then let me know in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can. And if you enjoyed today's video, then consider leaving a like as it helps out the video and the channel a ton. If you're new here, then maybe consider subscribing as well to help us reach 500,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for that. I'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.